hello hopefully all of you are doing good sorry i could not able to post anything in in i think couple of months as i was little bit busy so we will start from where we left off so we were basically working on this this plunk ui toolkit this particular playlist right and i think i have created couple of videos on that the initial video was how to set up your dev environment and the next video was on basics of react right and while doing that we are able to create a boilerplate code right by following this this instruction by using this this uh, splunk create command to create a monorepo then then using this splunk uh, sorry yarn run setup and then then yarn run start so when once we have done that so we have basically got this this kind of boilerplate code output right where we have a hello world and then there is a button you can click and it will show like how many times you have clicked that button right so now our intention is to create a to do list right so now in this particular video we will see how to convert this thing into a to do list right so for so basically we are trying to follow the similar example whatever we have in the splunk documentation in in next videos we will do our own creation of dashboards or something using this these things as well okay so what we are trying to do now is we will create a to do list something like this one right so it has a header if you see it right and it has some items if you click on an item a tick mark will show up over here if you click on it again so the tick mark will be gone so that's the behavior we wanted to implement it over here okay so let's do that so if we see our code base so initially we started with this react to do list dot jsx right so this is the one this is the component we have created using the class based component of react right so this is the component we have created react to do list which extends basically the component class and in our demo dot jsx we are basically having this one here right so so let's see how we can convert it to a to do list over here so for that what we'll do is we'll keep this styled container as is okay so we have discussed about this render method and other stuff in the previous video so that's why i'm not not doing it again so inside the style container if you see like currently we have this this style greeting hello then name right which is basically nothing but this this hello world this world we are we are passing it from our demo.jsx over here right so we do not need it now so let's let's comment that out then we have some message as well which will basically show show you how many times you have clicked that button right we do not need this one as well and at last we do not need this button as well right so these three things we do not need it now so but what you need is let's have a header over here if you see it the first thing is it's need a header so in html we have done it something like h1 h2 tag right so similarly in react also we have it so the best way to do it is like if you go to api docs right and i think i already had opened that one so if you go to this react ui right at the left hand side you will see lot of different controls over here like uh, the accordion or the menu item or anything right so we can we can use them and they have good examples as well so we can refer those examples and use them as well it's very easy to use so one of them should be a header uh let me find it out i think it is somewhere in the content right so heading so now if you see like just like h1 h2 tag so if i just show you the code so it is some simple like this this component you can use it as is so if i just say if i just copy this one and use it over here and save it once the compilation is completed you should be able to see okay it is giving me an error called heading is not defined that means you have to import it over here right so you can you can get that same input from here as well right from the example as well so let's import that now once we have that if you see it like heading 1 is showing up over here right now for us it will be my task right so 
it will be we either we can give it over here or we can basically have some default props with the name something like this right so that it we can keep it over here as well my task then we can just simply use this props over here something like this one right so this this dot props dot name over here right so if i do that so it will automatically change this one to my now currently then in the name i am sending it as world i think so let's change it over here we'll change it to my task or we can just we can just remove this one as well so that it will always take the default prop as well so whatever it's it's up to you like how you how you want to manage that like if i just remove this one let me show you that one as well so it should it should take the my task this particular string from from this default props as well here the default value as well so the any way we, we, we can do that right so let's keep that as a default default props over here so now we have created the header right so now the next thing is we have to create that menu item right so if i if i just see it over here we have something like my first task second task and third task an array of elements over here right so if i just go to ui toolkit this this plank ui react ui documentation right so there should be something called menu if you see it over here under utilities this is the menu now in in react ui there are a lot of ways you can create menus over here if you see like the simple menus then you can have icons over here as well right you can have links just like you see in the splunk product as well right so you can do it in similar way you can have menus with descriptions as well over here if you see like you can have you can create headings of menus or there are a lot of ways you can customize it and if you see like there are ways you can you can mention like whether a particular item is selectable or not or selected or not just like this one over here right and we wanted to do similar stuff here as well right so let's see this particular code so first thing is as we have done for header we have to import the menu as well so let's do that here right so we have imported menu and then the second thing is let's go over here so to create a menu at least we need this menu tag right and under that menu tag we need this menu items over here now what we can do is let's let's create a variable or state variable over here right so previously we, we, we do not need this line so let us comment that so let's create a data over here which will work as a default data over here then we can basically beca because what why we are creating this particular item in the state because whenever we want to click on something the tick mark will be changing right if i if it is already ticked it will be unticked and if it is not ticked it will be ticked as well right so that's why i am maintaining this particular variable inside this constructor over here where we are basically ins inside this state constructor over here right so we will say this dot state equals to let's create an object over here so probably i can we can we can see it from the from the splunk website itself so they have they have it over here something like this one right it's it's just a an items list over here so let us copy that so what it is what it is having it is having three dictionaries over here if you see it like each dictionary has some id value some title value and one is a done done key over here right so the title will be displayed as the list item basically whenever we'll be displaying so let let me go back over here whenever we'll be displaying this task so the title will go over here as you can see it right and and using this done we will maintain its state right whether it is ticked or not if done equals to true we will display that tick mark otherwise we will not display that tick mark okay so we have created this 
item states over here so now we will be using this to create the menu so first of all what we will be doing is inside this we have a menu over here right this particular menu will be created by iterating through this particular list over here right right so basically like if i if i just go back to the documentation over here so instead of specifically writing each and every menu item separately we can just loop it through and and we can just create those menu items on the fly right so so inside that let's open the curly braces now what we'll be doing it over here we will be creating a menu item by looping through it right so so we'll write something like this dot state dot items right the items dot map over here this is a javascript function right so map takes two arguments one is the item another is it also returns the index over here right so let's have an arrow function here so we will create menu dot item over here right so let's close this one so the menu item for each and every menu item if i just go back to the documentation so it will be selectable first of all right so i can just write something like this one select inside this menu item okay that that you have to remember it will be selectable right now which one will be selected where we have the done equals to true right so if you see again if you go back to the documentation and go to this api so there is a there is input call the property called selected over here right which is nothing but a bull uh, uh, boolean type so if i just write something like this one selected so if i just write something like this one selected equals to right so this item because this this represents each and every item of this list over here right so if i just write item dot done right so that will basically make sure whether that particular item is selected or not here right so if i just save it now so let's see what how it is coming up over here it is not displaying those title name over here right so in that case what we have to do is we have to basically mention the menu item name over here so that will if i just if i just see the documentation again examples and see this code over here if you see like this this line chart area chart this will be coming inside this menu item over here right so that that is what we'll be doing it so that means we have to give the title somewhere over here item dot the title over here so if i just if i just give that so it sh it should display those titles over here if you see it right even though it is not working as we are expecting because upon clicking on it it should remove the tick mark over here right which is not happening but at least we are able to display the list of items right and also we are able to create the tick mark for those items where we have the done equals to true okay so let, let's let's work on that but before that it is always good practice whenever you will be using this map function you give a key over here to uniquely identify each and every item in that list so we can use our item dot id over there right now what will happen if i click on that particular item so if i just go back to a documentation i am again and again going back to the documentation because like I, I cannot ex I cannot basically cover all those for a particular let's say for menu I cannot basically cover all the different properties and methods it support right but if we if we just know where to find stuff anyway if we are working on a new use case we can always come back to this documentation and see it right so if we just go to API now these are the props right 
now if you if you go down so there is a prop called on click over here right so call back for click event so that means we can write a function when for this on click so that function should take care of like how it will be it will be behaving when the particular item has been clicked over here right so let's set up this one over here so if i just write something like this one on click equals to so if we just call a function over here we can we can write a separate function and call it over here or we can write a on inline that arrow function over here as as we ex as we wish so let's let's see that so let's let's create a function over here let's name it as handle click as we have it in in splunk documentation itself right so let's say index over here so inside that let's take a constant over here items this is our current items over here this dot state dot items over here so i think somewhere i have written i'm very lazy this dot state state dot items over here right so this is the one currently we are having it over here now once we have index that means we are basically taking the index of that item which which are currently which get are currently get clicked over here right so what i can do is if i just take this items and take this particular element by using that index and set its done property what i can do is i can just toggle the done property over here right so if it is clicked if it is true then i will make it as false if it is false i'll make it as true over here right so this is how i can i can toggle this done property over here and then change the state over here right so using that this dot set state method right and what we are changing we are having this items this is the one we are currently setting it up right now inside inside our menu item we can just call this dot handle click index over here inside a curly braces over here right so this will make sure uh, once the particular item has been clicked its behavior is getting toggled over here so if i just save it now let it deploy okay it's going to some infinite loop let me see that code okay i i found it i have not defined the arrow function over here you can you can write this you can write this code completely over here as well instead of getting a separate function mm, but but that, that's up to you as i said okay so so once we have that i think it should be so if i click on over here if you see it like it is getting toggled if i click on over here the tick mark will come over here if i click on over here the tick mark will come and it will get, get toggled once i have clicked it again right so this is the way you can create a simple to do list using using this splunk react ui or basically using the splunk ui toolkit now what we will be doing it from the next video onwards is we will try to go into more deeper and try to understand how we can do unit testing how we can integrate this particular element or whatever component we have built it into our splunk apps so those type of things we will deep dive and then probably we will be trying to creating more more sophisticated dashboards or or pages using this ui toolkit over here okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video